What's going on guys? This is Brain from Advancement Hockey Advising here and today we'll be talking about how to make the jump from a lower tier junior hockey program to a higher tier one. But before we dive into the video, real quick, just a reminder to absolutely smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and share the video if you like the content. And as always, we always encourage you guys that if you have any questions, anything you want to talk to us about, feel free to drop a comment down below or even email us at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And like all of our videos here, there's going to be timestamps throughout the video. So if you want to go ahead and click on a specific section, you can. But if you want to just go ahead and watch the entire video, it's completely up to you. You can do what you want to do. All right, so I know that this has been a super highly requested topic. Several of you have requested this in the comments here and you know rightfully so because I think we all have the desire to you know try and jump at the highest level that we possibly can right try and play the best level of hockey we can so we can in turn uh, have the best schools looking at us and try and commit to the best program right I totally get that and I totally know why people want to do that I completely understand so that being said though I want to start off the video by being completely transparent with you guys and that is that making the jump from a lower tier junior hockey league to a higher tier one is quite difficult to do and it is quite rare. That being said though, it's not impossible and the whole goal of this video here is to kind of share you the tips and tricks that you can use to kind of maximize your chances of making that jump if you're in a lower tier junior hockey league to make that jump to a higher tier one. So before we dive into these tips and tricks, I just have a quick note is that this video is going to be focused mainly on junior hockey, but this can apply far beyond it, right? It can apply to minor hockey, it can apply to, you know, uh, professional hockey as well, right? Anything where you can make a jump from a lower tier hockey league to a higher one, and even in other sports too, if you're in a lower tier program to a higher one, a lot of this advice in this video is going to apply to you. So it's definitely good to take some notes here if you want to, and to kind of, you know, try and see what is going to work best for you and to follow these steps to try and, you know, succeed and, and make that jump to the higher league. All right, so there's going to be like two main parts of this video here. So number one is going to be the expectations that you need to have when making uh, the jump from a lower tier junior hockey league to a higher one. And then number two, once we have those expectations and foundation in place, we're going to dive into the specific steps that you can take to maximize your chances of success here. All right, so expectation number one here is that you have to be realistic, right? What I mean by realistic is not like trying to crush your hopes and dreams and being pessimistic, but someone realistic when you're making that jump right so here are good examples that that kind of highlight what a realistic jump would be so let's say you had a good season in the NOJHL or a league around that caliber in the rankings uh, you know if you want to try and aspire to go to CCHL camps and try and make a team that's really realistic right or another one is if you played in the EHL and your goal is to try and you know make the NCDC next year you know by going to camps and stuff very realistic as well, right? What wouldn't be realistic is if you're playing, let's say, in a league like the NA3HL, right? And then you're trying to make uh, the jump to the USHL next year, right? That, that's such a big discrepancy. And I would say, I don't know if it's ever been done. In all honesty, it's, it's, it's a little bit unrealistic in that point. So I would say, first thing, just be you know somewhat realistic when you're creating your target leagues and the target teams that you want to contact. All right, expectation number two here is that you have to have a great season okay in your lower tier league to have a chance at the higher tier league next year right if you don't have that good of a season you know most coaches if not all coaches won't give you the time of day you really have to have a good season in your past league to be able to move up that's that's a big rule that you or guideline i should say that you should follow all right so what does that look like well it depends on the type of player here right we all have different types of players and we market ourselves differently for skilled forwards I would say, you know, at the very minimum, at least one point per game in the lower tier league. If you're below that, you can't really market yourself as a skilled forward. So I would say one point per game is a good benchmark to kind of look at. You'll also need a really good highlight video, right? So showcasing goal or things like, you know, nice goals, uh, you know, really good playmaking abilities, good passes, uh, beating D one-on-one, -on -one, you know, making good plays, all that kind of stuff, showing high hockey IQ, you know, some good skating, all that stuff. Um, you know, if you showcase that in your highlight video, that'll really help you out too. So I would say all together, you know, have a really good season of one point per game and have a good highlight video showcasing your skills. All right, moving on to the next type is if you're an offensive D, again, you're, you're going to want to show very similar things as a skilled forward, right? You're going to maybe not be quite at the one point per game mark, but at least have almost that or close to that so you can kind of you know market yourself as an offensive d and that teams actually see you as that and not like a defensive defenseman so 
that's really important being close to that one point per game mark and again having a good highlight video showing good first passes good you know skating you know out of the zone you know kind of maybe a couple end-to-end -end things uh, some good shots on net you know getting the puck through all that kind of stuff that's really important your highlight video too right so showcasing all of that uh, next, we kind of move on to the next category, which is more of a defensive defenseman or even a power forward here. I would say a good benchmark is at least, you know, um, you know, 0.5 points per game, you know, or a point every two games. That's a really good benchmark to look at, right? You don't have to have a ton of points if you market yourself as this, but you need to have some points to show that, okay, at least the, the person can play and generate some secondary scoring and stuff like that, right? This here, your highlight video is going to look a bit different, right? So for a power forward, it's going to be more like, you know, beating the DY, driving to the net, you know, uh, crashing and banging in the corners, winning puck battles, all that kind of stuff. That's what they want to see in a power forward. And for a defensive defenseman, you know, closing the gap at the blue line, you know, really good, you know, one-on-one -on -one abilities where you, you stop the guy, uh, hard hits, good puck battles uh, in the corner where you win, get the puck, make a nice first pass, uh, you know, blocking the forward from, you know, entering the goal crease, you know, uh, protecting the house, all that kind of stuff, shot blocks, you know, that's what you're going to want to showcase. For So as you can see, for every type of player, you're going to want to showcase different things, but the the main message here is that you have to have a good season where you have some good stats uh, and you show some good highlights so the coach at least has interest to start. Uh, start with to, to invite you to their camp or something like that and a quick tip too uh, we talked a lot about highlight videos here but you know having a full game or two uh, where you played you know at your best is, is really important because sometimes coaches yes they'll look at the highlight video to get you know initial interest in you but oftentimes they'll ask for a full game to see uh, to determine if they're going to invite you to their main camp or if they're going to sign you or something like that so really important to, to have those full games in the background in case a coach asks for it all right and expectation number three here is if you do get invited to a camp where the coach has genuine interest you need to show them that you belong there and you need to outperform every single other player that's fighting for position uh, at that camp, right? Because if you think about it, you know, you're coming from a lower tier hockey league and chances are most players at that camp will be coming from, you know, higher backgrounds or pedigrees, if you will, you know? So you have to really show the coaching staff that, hey, I belong here and I'm much better than the rest of my competition. That's the only way really that you're going to outperform them and that you're going to outcompete them for a spot. All right, so we covered the expectations here. Let's move on to the steps that you can take to maximize your chances of making the jump. All right, step number one here is to let your current coach know that you're trying to make the jump next year, right? It's always, you know, best to go the honest approach and tell your coach just so they're aware, right? Because you don't want them to be taken off card if you know, a coach that you're trying out for that you contact contacts your coach and they're kind of taken off guard, always best to let them know, you know, for that reason and also just out of respect, right? You know, most coaches, uh, especially in the lower tier programs, they're all about advancing players either to, you know, college hockey or to a higher junior league. So I would say 95 to 99% of coaches are going to be completely okay with it and they're going to encourage you to, you know, move on to a higher league next year and are going to be really supportive, you know, granted that you were a good person there and you were good for their program. All right, step number two here is to create a highlight video of the most recent footage that you can that, you know, showcases what kind of player you really are, right? So if you're a skill forward, you know, a power forward, a playmaking forward, a goal scorer, you know, a defensive defenseman, two-way D, offensive D, whatever it is, you want to pick the specific clips um, that are really necessary, that are going to really help market you the best uh, of your abilities, right? You, you really want to pick the clips that are going to showcase what type of player you are. So it's really important as soon as you can create this highlight video. Do not contact coaches without creating uh, any sort of video like this because then, you know, they're, they're going to ask for it. They're going to want to see video. So, you know, do this before you start contacting coaches. All right, step number three here, and we already kind of talked about this, but it's to save, you know, one to two full games uh, on video somewhere. You just have them uh, like available in case a coach asks for it. Because chances are, if they do see a highlight video, uh, I would say a good number of coaches want to see a little bit more. And you want to show them the games where you played the best, right? So show them those games. You know, obviously some coaches are going to go and watch whatever game, a random game, so you can't pick and choose. But, you know, I would say some coaches don't. So go ahead and pick, uh, show them the best game that you played. And that's a, a really good thing you can do, you know, to, to really, you know, up your chances of them either signing you or inviting you to camp. 
All right, so you've done all the prerequisites here. So now it's finally time to start contacting the coaches since you have all your stuff together. So the first thing I wanna say when it comes to contacting coaches is to contact as many as you can in as many target leagues as possible, right? Write down all your target leagues, you know, find you know all the coaches' uh, contact information in all those different leagues, right? All the different coaches, and then one by one, you want to target as many as you can because you kind of want to cast a wide net, right? You want to you know increase your ch as much chance as possible for you to have you know as many coaches reach back out to you as possible, right? Because not every coach is looking for the type of player you are. You know, not every coach is going to respond to you. So the more you target the better it's gonna be, the better chances you're gonna to have to either, you know, get signed right off video, which I would say is quite rare, you know, if you're coming from a lower league, or to get invited to camp and for a coach to have genuine interest. Also, a quick note too, um, timing is very important when you're contacting coaches, right? Uh, most coaches, in the higher leagues anyways, they start recruiting, you know, I would say, you know, mid-March or something like that, sometimes a little bit earlier, sometimes a little bit later, but that's typically when they start. And then I would say they wrap up most of their recruiting by mid to end July, okay? And that might be a little late. Like a lot of them wrap up most of their spots, most of their team is almost filled uh, by that point. And then if there's a camp that's later than that and you're still not signed anywhere, well, just know that you're probably gonna be trying out for the, you know, the, the, the last few spots available on the team. So that's just something I want you to know. Really start, you know, getting all your, your material together, reaching out to coaches, start it as early as possible. I would say, you know, if you start like in March, you're, you're really ahead of the game and that's gonna increase your chances for sure. All right, too, and when you're reaching out to coaches, you know, it's really important, first of all, to keep it as concise as possible, right? Coaches don't want essays, they won't read it if it's an essay, okay? So really make it as concise and relevant as possible. You just wanna put the key information in there. So what I typically, you know, put if I'm, you know, emailing coaches for my clients or if my clients or other people I know, they wanna email coaches themselves, I just tell them to put this info here. So first, put your name, express that you're interested in the program in like one sentence or, or something like that, you know, keep it short. Um, you know, put your birth year, you know, the, your position, you know, what type of player you are. And then from there, the team you played for, you can put a line of any like special accolades or awards that you won, right? If you're the captain of your team or if you won like star of the week, some, something like that. You could put that if you want to, you don't have to. Um, your elite prospects link, okay? That's super important. You have to put that because every coach, the first thing they do is look you up on elite prospects. So if you put the link, you know, it makes it easier for them. And then uh, your highlight video link. So that's really important as well. So if you include all these things, perfect. Don't include more than that. Really try and keep it short and sweet as much as possible because, you know, coaches are busy and they don't have the time of day to, to read like 50 essays a day. You know what I mean? So, you know, really important to keep it short and sweet. All right. So step number five here is to respond to all coaches who contact you back, right? That's just a no brainer, right? So that you're professional, try and respond within 24 hours if possible, right? Respond to them in a professional manner. And this is where you want to start gauging interest, right? So chances are, you know, if you had a, a pretty good season and and you come from a decent league anyways, uh, coaches in higher leagues will, you know, a good number of them should respond back to you. Uh, some of them will be very generic. Some of them will say they're not interested, but I would say a good number of them should say, you know, like at least come to my camp or something like that. If you're really lucky, like they'll ask for a full game of video and then you give it to them that they want to sign you, that's if you're really lucky. I would say, you know, uh, 95 to 99% of the time, that's not what's gonna happen. Most of them that are somewhat interested are gonna invite you to camp. And then you wanna kinda of gauge interest from there, right? If you have like, you know, five to six camp offers, I would suggest not to go to all of them. I'd probably limit it a little bit, you know? So I would call, you know, uh, every coach and just ask them, you know, what are my chances, you know, realistically, have an honest conversation with them. I would say, you know, most coaches, if not, yeah, I would say most coaches are usually very honest and they'll tell you what your chances are. And then from there, you can kind of gauge uh, the interest and you kind of, you know, put each camp in order of priority that you're gonna go to. All right, step number six here is to sign up for the camps where the interest was highest, right? So it's kind of building off the last point that we talked about, but you know, after you talked about talked about it with the coaches, you know, you can usually, you know, get a sense of which one was most interested and you can kind of create a list of priorities, right? Like I said before, you know, I would say a good number of camps to go to is two to three, right? Anything, you know, more than that is kind of, um, wasting your time and money in a sense. You know, I, you don't want to spend too much on all these camps, but if you go to less than that, let's say you don't go to any camps at all. Well, you know, that's, you can't really do much then, but let's say you do uh, one camp. Well then 
there's always the element of luck involved, right? What if you get there and then your skates aren't sharpened and it, it kind of ruins it for you or, you know, you just don't have a great camp for whatever reason, you know, well then it, it's kind of, it's too bad at that point because you don't have an other opportunity. I would say usually the golden number is usually three. If you go to three camps and you still don't make it, well then, you know, you gave it your best, but you go back to the league you were in. But if you go to three camps, it gives you that opportunity to really, you know, at least in one of them to, to have a great camp and to have that opportunity to make the team. So I would say three is usually the magic number. All right, so step number seven here is, you know, once you sign up for the camps and once you know you're going to camps, train for those camps like your life depended on it, right? So the coaches here are giving you genuine opportunities for you to shine, for you to showcase yourself. You know, you are an underdog here. So absolutely train for that camp like your life depended on it and show them that, you know, you do belong there and you really have to, you know, show up there and really crush the camp, which is step number eight here. And that is to show up to the camp crush it and give it absolutely everything you've got. And I have the last one word of advice here before we kind of recap the video. And that is that, as you can see, you know, there's a lot of things that are involved to try and make the jump to a higher league, right? It is quite difficult, it's not easy, and it's, it's quite rare actually for players to make the jump. You know, most players just stay in the league that they're at. So a message that I want to give you here is that when you're first, you know, starting out going into the junior hockey world, before you sign anywhere, do your best to try and sign in the highest league possible. You know, we made a video that's called, you know, ranking of all the best junior A hockey leagues for to go NCAA, right? And you can check out that video if you want to, it's gonna be linked. But um, I would say follow that guideline, okay? And really try and aim for the highest league possible because going uh, down a level, let's say you go to the higher league, you're not really playing or anything like that. You can always go down a level, that's not too hard, right? But going up a level is what's hard. So try and go for the highest possible. If it doesn't work out, you know, settle for the, the highest possible league you can. And then from there, if you need to go down one more, you can. But if you, if you need to go up, it will be harder. So that's just a big last message that I want to give you guys uh, to wrap up the video here. All right, so I know I gave a ton of information here. So we're going to recap the most important points that we talked about in the video. So first thing, making the jump, you know, from a lower tier junior hockey league to a higher tier one is not easy, but it's definitely possible. All right, so when you are making the jump, remember these key things here. So number one, be realistic with yourself, okay? Go to try and make a realistic jump. Number two, you need to have a great season in the lower tier league to have a chance at a higher tier league. Number three, you need to have great video altogether. Number four, you need to contact as many target coaches as you possibly can. And number five here, you need to crush your competition once you get to camps. All right, last quick thing, try aiming for the highest league you possibly can when you're starting out because you know going down a league is much easier if you need to than going up a league. All right guys, if you like that video and you haven't already, absolutely feel free to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and share the video if you like the content. If at any point throughout the video you had any questions pop up or you want to talk to us about anything in particular that's on your mind, feel free to drop a comment down below. Or if you want to message us privately, feel free to email info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Also, if you want to check out more about us, if you want to see you know, all the stuff we do like on our Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, website, newsletter, all that kind of stuff, there's a link down in the description below that you can click and it's going to give you access to all of it. And that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you on that next one.